my creative friends Ashley Anderson here. Today in this video I'm going to show you these two fun pages that I created inside of my son's Cub Scout album for memory keeping. You guys can definitely recreate these for your own life or use these as inspiration to document stories and it doesn't have to be Christmassy. I'm, I'm a little behind in this album so mine is Christmas theme but you can totally do this for any time of the year. So we're going to start off in Cricut Design Space, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize that this didn't film the entire uh, screen, so you guys can't see what I'm doing at the bottom. But all I did was I took a hexagon and I put it on the page. Cricut Design Space already has these on there. You just pick a shape. I stuck it on there. I kind of sized it to what I thought would be a good size based off the album that I'm using. And I'll talk a little bit more about the album in just a few minutes, but... I sized these the way that I wanted them and then I actually copied it and pasted it six times because I wanted to do six hexagons. But I ended up redoing this process because I wasn't thinking this through. So I got all the way to, to the end of this like getting ready to make it and I realized wait a second I need these to fold over and they won't fold over if they're separate. So you'll see me I go back I'm going to delete all of them except for two of them. And the two of them that I'm keeping, I'm going to stick them together. And then in Cricut Design Space, it's called Weld. And you can weld these two shapes together so it doesn't cut two individual hexagons. It'll just cut one. So then once we like get it cut out, we can fold these over. And I'll show you guys that in just a few. But I had initially copied that, did it six times. And then I went back through and I took off three of them because the way that I was laying my cardstock paper out on the mat I knew that if I did six the cuts would be like it would be too hard to cut each little section out on the cardstock so here I'll show you how I'm laying those out on my Cricut mat so I went through this is how I store my cardstock from Christmas I just have it all stuck in this bag and then I went through I picked out which pattern papers that I wanted chose those and then I took my Cricut mat and I started to cut these down while looking at design space. So if you see at the top of the Cricut mat, there's numbers one through 12 and it's also down the side one through 12. The mat on Cricut design space is set up the exact same way. So I have learned through trial and error to always look at the Cricut mat on design space and go off of it where I need to cut these papers down. So I knew like, for example, the first one needed to come down um, I think it was like to three and a half to the about the three and a half maybe four mark and I just cut my paper out from there and I did that for the second one and for the third one and I ended up doing this two separate times so putting the papers on the mat two separate times to create six hexagon shapes so once we have that done it's time to stick this in the Cricut and let it work its magic <music> Right, it's finished but I want to talk just a second about Cricut mats you'll see after I weed these that the cardstock is a little bent that's because this mat is pretty much a brand new mat it's their standard grip I typically only use the standard grip mats for vinyl I like using the light grip mats that they have it's the blue one I like using the light grips for anything paper related because it doesn't bend your papers However, my light grip mat right now is really filthy. Things are not wanting to stick to it, so I need to get it cleaned before I can use it, and this is the only other mat that I had. I could have weeded these a little bit better whenever I pulled the hexagons off of the mat, like I could have slowed down and, and got them off there smoother so they wouldn't bend, but I knew once I got these inside of my album, it wasn't gonna be a big deal because over time it would flatten them out anyways, so I just pulled them off of there. All right, here's the cutout shapes, the hexagons, and I wanted to create these little foldovers, so it was kind of like it was a hidden, like, ooh, what's behind door number one, and you can flip it up. So to do that, you just fold the shapes over where the center part is, and I took my bone folder and I went over that fold to create that good, crisp fold to really 
really smash that fold down so got those folded over and then from there I got my album now the album that I'm using is from Heidi Swap it's not an actual album I guess it's a more of like a journal or um, notebook I guess you could call it the pages in this one are blank if you get some from Heidi Swap make sure you're looking at the journals at the notebooks whatever you want to call them because some of them are planners I actually didn't realize that until I ordered one because I like the cover and it was actually a planner so this one is has blank pages on the inside I like this one because I can keep all of these like these different little folders inside of an album if you guys want to know what the heck I'm talking about let me know and I can make a video about it explaining that but the album that I'm using or the folder that I'm using the notebook again I'm interchangeable words here it is from Heidi Swap so I am lining these up in here just kind of seeing are they going to fit where do I want the placement to be before I move on so from there we are going to print some photos out for the hexagons now for me I have a Canon selfie I love this thing highly 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 recommend it the only downside is that it only prints out four by six photos but you can make collages and things on them which I'm going to show you but I still love it highly recommend it so here I'm going to the Canon selfie app I'm going to select the in up layout and this is how you can create a collage and I'm going to go to an album that I already have set up for my son's Cub Scouts. I'm going to select the four photos that I want to print, pull those in, and then I'm going to change it to where I can have four on one, one photo paper. Two of the photos I did go in and I zoomed in on those just a little bit to get a closer view. But other than that, I left everything else the same. I make sure to choose, make sure that it's already set up to where it's borderless because if not, it will print a border around each photo which just takes away from the size of your photo. Once you print this, it does take you to the actual print app. So you have to have both of those apps, but from the print app, it just prints. Now the second photo, I'm just doing the um, selective, like select and print. I chose a photo, I flipped it around, I zoomed in on the boys so there wasn't that weird white border around the side of it, got it zoomed in. And again, from there, I just printed that one out. All right, photos are printed. So whenever you print photos with a Canon selfie, it does come with these little edges that you just pop off there. So I pop those off. I cut the four individual photos out. The other four by six, I didn't need to. Obviously, it's a it's the full photo. Um, so I got these cut out and ready to go. And then from there, we are just going to adhere the smaller photos on the hexagon. So I have four photos. I have six hexagons. I chose which photos I wanted to go where, thinking about where I was placing these hexagons on the uh, in the notebook because a couple of these photos are my son with Santa, and I wanted those ones together. Some of the other photos are the boys together hanging out. So as you can see, the photos don't line up perfectly with this. You can um, make your hexagons sized for these photos if you wanted to. I didn't mind it because I knew I was going to trim them down. There's a white border on either side of the photo in the hexagon, and I think it actually looks really cute. So I took some Tombow double-sided adhesive tape, stuck those down in there, trimmed off the excess, and I did that with the four smaller photos. The other two hexagons that are going to be empty, we're just going to put some embellishments in. Speaking of embellishments, we're going to get these hexagons stuck down inside of that notebook, that journal, and then I'm going to start decorating them, which is always the fun part. It's fun creating these hexagons and these fun little shapes. I mean, look, we just took one shape and created these fun little fold outs. You could do this with triangles, with circles, with whatever you wanted to do, just to create something fun that pops up and gives a little bit of dimension to your memory keeper. And you can do this, you don't need this album, if you use Allie Edwards albums, that's totally fine. If you use a happy planner to memory keep in, you could definitely do something like this. You don't have to have this specific album, notebook, planner, whatever we're calling. <laughs> all of these interchangeable terms. I know it gets hard sometimes to keep up with all the names, but um, you can use whatever you have to create this. Again, it's just a hexagon shape stuck together. The other thing I want to say is if you do not have a Cricut, you can still do this. Get on Microsoft Word, 
create two hexagon shapes, just the outline. Make sure there's not a collar fill in there, just the outline and print the outline out on some patterned paper and then cut it out and boom, you have the same thing that I have. So you don't even have to have a Cricut to do this. I want you to get creative. Anytime you see my spreads, you see somebody else's, you see these fun creative memory keeping ideas, I want you to think about how you can do them without having the same stuff because I promise you don't need the same things that everybody else has. This is a fun little paper, um, cardstock paper. This is from Allie Edwards. It come in one of her December daily kits. And I'm cutting out this little title. It says Santa's coming. Um, gonna get it all trimmed up and then I'm gonna stick it down. But before I stick it down, I kind of think about what am I gonna put with this to do a little bit of layering and kind of adding some more fun embellishment. So I had pulled out some stuff from my stash and I started to look through those. Now most of my December stuff is from Allie Edwards, but this label sheet here is from Heidi Swap, and I knew I wanted to use one of the labels to note what this whole entire page was about. So again, Tombow double-sided adhesive tape, use this stuff all the time, love it. Gonna adhere that down. Below the Santa's coming, I put a sticker that says having a merry little Christmas. It is in green and I chose green specifically because I knew I wanted to use a red label to title this page. The sticker is a little bit longer, goes over to the hexagon, so I just trimmed it up. I didn't trim it up very well, <laughs> but I trimmed it up some. And then here I have this red little label. And on this label sticker, I'm going to write down Cub Scouts Christmas dinner. And then in just a few, we are going to put a date stamp on that label. The stamp I have is from Heidi Swap, and then the ink that I'm using is archival ink. The archival ink is awesome because you can put it on like photos and it'll stay. It won't smear off. Most inks won't stay on photos. You can put it on a ton of different surfaces and it's going to stay there. The only bad thing about archival ink is it does stain your stamps. So if you guys ever watch my videos and my stamps look filthy, <laughs> I promise I've cleaned them. It's just from the archival ink. It does stain. So be very cautious with this. Date stamp the label sticker, that red one, and then I also put the dates on one of the photos because I thought it was just a fun little, little thing to do. And then from here, we're just going to start adding some different embellishments, but first, I want to do some journaling on one of the hexagons and talk about what had happened during that day. I talked about how Santa brought the, the kids there. Pinewood Derby cars and then they they had done some popcorn sales and from that they had won prizes and then they also gave out additional gifts so it was really just a fun day we had dinner the the kids all got gifts Santa come and so I just journaled a little bit about that and then once I finished my journaling I did underline it because I like the way that looked and then from there it was just a matter of adding fun embellishments to the rest of this page For the embellishments, some of these things I have are little cardstock pieces, some are chipboard, some are like a foam kind of material. I don't really know all these material names, but I have just a ton of different embellishments. So just sticking those down inside of here. I think one of my favorite ones is honestly the circle, this green circle. It says these December stories, and I love that I use the circle shape on top of the hexagon and that green on the circle match the green trees on that hexagon shape so sink and well I just love the way that that one worked out honestly I might go back and add a few more circles to some of the other hexagons on the outside just because I really like the way that that looked so again just adding some fun embellishments and then here in just a minute we're going to move on the second page and I'm going to show you something fun with some vellum
All right, let's have some fun with some vellum. We are going to create this fun little page over here on the left side. You can see it there on the screen. So I have this star vellum sheet. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I use the journal page as a template to trace this so I knew where to cut it out. I have my paper trimmer. I cut it out. I also took scissors and cut around the corners because the corners are curved. And then from there, be very cautious when you do this because vellum is a hit or miss. It'll either break and snap and it won't work or it'll be perfect. So you have to be super cautious. I actually did rip my vellum just a little bit with this, but I have my paper trimmer and I'm going to use it as a scoreboard and I have my bone folder and I'm going to score the vellum sheet just a little bit. Again, don't push too hard. I did push too hard in one spot and it ripped. Just be cautious with that. Did a little light scoring to it. And then from there, I'm going to fold that score line over. I'm going to run over top of that with my bone folder to really create that good score with this. And then I flip the page over over and I flatten that score line out because we are going to add this into the journal to create a fun little divider in between the pages but you can still kind of see through it. I just love vellum. I just love that you can see through it but you can have patterns on it, you can print on it, you can do so many fun things with vellum. So again just flattening out where I scored that and then from there I'm going to take some red line tape. I put two, I have some really thin red line tape so um, if you only have thick red line tape, make sure when you score this, you have enough room, like you score it wide enough that your tape will fit. But I have some thin red line tape. Now this is like really, really good tape. It's going to stick really well. I have no concerns about it coming off this. Once you put red line tape down, it's typically really, really, really hard to come off of there. It's a permanent tape. So red line tape did two strips of that. And then we are going to stick this inside of the journal. To stick this down, I turned the notebook towards me and then lined it up as best as I could, stuck it down. And then I took my bone folder and I went over where the tape was. And I did this because when I put the tape down, there was some lumps in it because I didn't do it very well. So I was just kind of flattening all those out, making sure it was stuck down really, really well. See, it turns out so cute and it looks like it was just meant to be in there. It was already come like that and I just love it. I love vellum. All right, so now we're going to create this page. So I went ahead and I picked out some different journal cards that I wanted to use and then I have this pattern paper that we're going to adhere this four by six photo to and then create a little border around that photo. I'm going to start sticking everything down and then the white journal card, it says tis the season at the top. And I'm going to do a little bit of fun journaling on this to describe these rotten, ornery little boys. the journaling the top says subject the subject is the boys and then down there there's a checklist so I thought it would be fun to do a checklist describing boys so I have ornery wild fun rough sweet courageous lovable and the best and I thought that was just really super cute um, just a fun way to describe these ornery little boys and then I circled the sixth because this happened on December the sixth and this is a checklist, so I went ahead and I checkmarked all of those words. I just thought this was something cute and fun. And then from there, I did add some embellishments to this. I did not show it here because it did take a hot minute. I, I was like putting things down, taking things off. I ended up going with the star theme, which you will see here in just a second whenever I flip this page over. Just... 
All right, my creative friends, that is two fun little pages inside of my son's Cub Scout journal. I hope I gave you some inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.